Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here. Um, I had made a series of images a few years ago that are really disturbing, and I thought I would take this time out of the year, uh, my favorite time of the year, and show you kind of how I made them. We met at a haunted house, and uh, she has some some body paint on her, and I had her do a series of, of quick poses. So one is her just kind of screaming with her, her hands by her face here, and then another one where I had her pulling her eyes down like this. So what I want to do is I want to combine these together into one image and then maybe kind of mess with it a little bit after that. So it's not that difficult of a process, but I thought I would walk through it anyway because the result is pretty darn disturbing and that's always fun. So I'm going to do some, little, uh, I'm going to capture one here and you could get, do this in Lightroom, it doesn't matter, but I've basically got the exposure where I want it in these images. Uh, and they're all similar. So I don't have a huge, hugely dark image and an extremely bright image. I'm trying to combine those together because that's just going to make a uh, work for yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these into uh, Photoshop and uh, as separate documents. If you're using Lightroom, you can obviously stack them as one document to work. Uh, I'm just going to do that manually uh, since I'm not using Lightroom and Capture One doesn't have that ability built in. Uh, so not a big deal to break it for me, but it is what it is. Oh, by the way, here's the one that I had made in the past. Uh, so this is where I'm going, but we're going to recreate this from scratch. And I'm using a little bit different image uh, than I had used in the other one. I kind of like these hands now uh, where I did this the first time. I didn't really like that. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of run with it a little bit differently. I'm going to use kind of the similar eyes that I did before, though. So we'll let these load here. Okay, so once all three documents are loaded, I'm going to pick those up and move them into one document. So I just uh, use my picker here and drag the image in uh, and then grab the other one as well. Okay, I grabbed the same one twice. I did not. Yay. All right, so I'm not going to deal with these right now. We're just going to look at them one at a time. So uh, I'm going to hit five on my keyboard to drop the opacity. Hit V on my keyboard uh, so I can align it. And I'm basically going to put this right over the top of the other one. So kind of see what I'm doing. Uh, I think it's oftentimes funny too when I'm dragging assets into these uh, that hilarious things can can happen. Okay, so uh, by the way, when I first did this, I freaked myself out because once I did it, I was like, oh my God, that looks so good. It was creepy right away, which means I'm on to something. All right, so I'm gonna hit a zero on my uh, keypad, which I know now these are aligned. I'm gonna go ahead and alt click on the mask, which means it'll create a black mask. Uh, so this is what my mask looks like. It's alt clicking on that, by the way, to look at that. Let's zoom in a bit. I'm going to hit B for brush and 100% flow and 100% opacity. And uh, I'm going to paint with white and I'm basically going to reveal what's under there. So uh, kind of see what, what I can see. And I don't want, uh, I have to decide if I want the eyebrow from the original or the eyebrow from the new one. I think I want the eyebrow from the original. So it's using a soft brush here, um, but I want to make it so that there's as much of a seamless transition between the two as possible. So some of these eyelashes are a little tricksy, but I found what looks like a pretty good fit right there. Uh, and if you can't tell, like if you're looking and go, hmm, where did that start? Where did that stop? Then you know you did it right. And so in this case, we need to use the bag of the eye here from the new one. Um, but I gotta be careful because their fingers are right there. So we'll just kind of come this around like this. And we do have that bit of body paint under the eyes. So maybe we'll use that. There, so that looks pretty decent to me. And then we'll do the same to the other side. Here, five, V, move it so that, I'm just aligning the tear duct, by the way. That's kind of what I'm looking at. And then hit zero, Alt the mask, B for brush, and then paint with white to reveal. Again, kind of just looking for what looks like decent balance between the original and the new, the new layer. Like it should be a nice, nice transition. And I'm using a soft brush, uh, which I would tell you normally when we're doing skin retouching or skin manipulation, we don't want to use a soft brush, but in this case, I think that will be fine. And again, here's your finger. So I gotta find a nice transition. There we go. Okay. Good enough for being pretty darn creepy. <laughs> so, 
right, that looks really good. All right, now normally I would tell you to not, you know, to, to save all these so we can use them later. Um, but uh, for the sake of the video, I think I, well, maybe I won't. I would normally just go ahead and drop these to one layer. Um, but I may not do that yet. So I'm gonna do is a Control Alt Shift E or Control Option uh, Shift E. I think on a Mac, I'm not a Mac guy. Uh, which makes a stamp of all the ones below it. So we can turn all these off. So eventually I can delete all these. Um, but in case I screwed up, I can always go back and go get that. So this is what we have so far, and it's pretty awesome. Um, now I'm not gonna worry about cropping and straightening that. I'm gonna do that later. Uh, as the last step, um, but until that point, I have some stuff to do. Now, I like um, I like the creepy the creepy factor of this image, and I did not retouch the skin or anything on here. Uh, so I think um, I had some spider webs in the original image, and I don't remember where I got them. Uh, they're here. I'm just going to grab these same spider webs and bring them into this this. Uh, so it's just like a, a bit of a spider web that I found. So I was gonna grab those and put those in here. And nobody's gonna know there's spider webs. They're probably gonna think there's something else. So I'm gonna control T to enter uh, the transform mode and I'm gonna go into uh, warp. And I'm just gonna fix these so they kind of stick to the teeth. They're gonna look like saliva from a distance. So I'm really not worried about what they look like. There we go, which is kind of creepy. I like it. And it's a little a little bit translucent, which bothers me. So I'm gonna double that layer. I'm gonna control J. Oh, cool, just got a subscriber. What are the odds? <laughs> right, uh, so maybe that's a bit aggressive. No, it looks nice from a distance. Uh, maybe not. How's this look with just one? Yeah, maybe one layer is enough. I do wanna make sure though that uh, it's not too sharp. This looks pretty decent. Like if it were too sharp, it would kind of stick out. Um, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so now let's get to work on fixing the skin. So the first thing we have is obviously that all the makeup on her face is cracking and uh, we need to fix that. Uh, not that we're gonna fix the cracking, but we need to fix the fact that the skin color is coming through. Um, that's the, the problem here. And there's about a thousand ways to do this. Uh, however, I, I like to kind of cheat and do it a really simple way. We're just gonna create a blank layer and set it to color. I'm gonna grab a brush. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna sample the color that I want it to be like this. And I can basically just, I'm not painting over her lips though. I basically just can paint over any part that's skin oriented and it will replace it with that color. So basically just taking the color out. And it makes her kind of grayish. Now there are other tones going on here and I am kind of being a bit destructive with this, but um, at this point, I'm just looking for a quick and dirty solution. So uh, actually, this is a little bit more gray. Maybe I like this in color better. Yeah, it's almost like a blue gray. And we'll color tone this when we're done. All right for now, we're just gonna do, we're just gonna get rid of the skin tone. And you can see I'm not being very careful about where I'm going with this and that's fine with me. Uh, for what we're doing here, I don't care. I tend to work at a great distance from the canvas too. I think that that's uh, a little more forgivable. If I need to make this something for a poster, I'll get right up in there. But uh, for what I'm doing here, I mean, that looks really good. And you're not going to know, oh, you know, he wasn't really super careful. That, that's fine. Okay, same with the hands. Um, just kind of go through and I don't want to destroy all those other colors that are in there. But um, if there's any obvious skin, I'll just go ahead and grab this paint right over there. And here, like this. And all we're doing is basically just covering up the, the skin color right now and replacing it with this gray, bluish kind of thing. There. And in her chest, I would probably resample here because this is a different color down here. And maybe get this color here. And just add a little bit of the skin out of the way there. Sorry, Allie, you're <laughs> probably not liking me right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good enough. All right. So this is all just the, and you can see the before and after on that. It's pretty significant. Um, so all we're doing is covering up the blue. Um, 
This is a spider web. Maybe we should leave. So this is the web. This is the color. And then if I want to, I could go to the, the layer below that, make a new layer again. And this would be my, my skin correction. So if there's anything I need to remove, um, I would just use a spot healing brush in this situation. So if there's any like bumps or things that I want to get rid of, like I may, I think I would probably take your piercings off only because I think they're confusing the eyes to what they are. And I don't think they're adding to the image. Um, thing here. And uh, I mean, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and take all these for these hairs off her forehead. And again, I'm not being su super careful because unlike regular skin, um, body paint, body painted skin or, or, you know, heavily modified skin like this doesn't, you know, in some I just say that and then I show you, it does matter. Uh, you can pretty much abuse it and it'll look okay. Um, however, some of these are looking a little more, um, use a different brush here. She used the spot healing brush. The automatic one. I usually don't use this, but I think for removing hairs, it works really well. Um, yeah, it's kind of magical. But in, in general, I think it kind of does a next to poor job. Uh, I know that there's an update coming soon to Photoshop where this um, Content Aware product will get a major upgrade, but I don't know how that's going to affect the brushes so much as the actual Content Aware fill, uh, which is a pretty amazing tool. All right, that's uh, pretty visually disturbing. And I think I like, I don't know, do I like this red inside of there? Maybe I do. Um, I do notice that the color here is different here. So I gotta fix that. Looks like I, I painted that the first time and I kind of forgot about it. And the side of her mouth over here. That's one of the reasons I don't tend to like to flatten my working layers until I'm done. It's because you know, you're gonna see things. You're like, oh yeah, damn, I missed that. Uh, Easy to fix now. It's like nothing ever happened. Ooh, and her ear back here. Do I care about that? Maybe. No. You take time on your own work here. I'm just kind of giving you the the rules or the rules, the guideline on on what I'm doing, and you go ahead and, and make it your own. Okay. I like it. That looks pretty good. All right. So um, now let's go ahead and I'm going to do another control alt shift E. I use that trick a lot. Um, that means that all these layers here are no longer useful. Um, if I decide to keep this layer now, since we've done a bunch of work already, I think I am going to get rid of these and note that this is being actually, we can keep these uh, for reference. We'll just do this. So you have, a, we can always go the before and after if we want to, there's before and after so far. All right, so now let's uh, let's go in here and we're going to liquefy this. So um, Control Shift X or Command Shift X, and you see that it's recognizing her face, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, so you can go in here. You could you can mess with this um, eye size. Yeah, why not? Do we want both eyes the same size? Maybe eye height. You can tie them together too with this. Yeah, eye width. I tilt. <laughs> let's, let's tilt them a little bit differently. Each one's tilted a little bit differently. We want to do that? No, it looks like a beginner did it. <laughs> All right, this is fun, actually. A distance between the eyes. She's going to look like a fish person. It's going to be an HP Lovecraft Dagon reference for all of you HP Lovecraft fans out there. All right. So there we go. Her nose. How high it is. Width. And I just do like I typically do. I just kind of wiggle the controls until I see something I like. I'm not really looking at a setting, a specific setting. Yeah, I think that, I think that, that smile up there, pulling those cheeks back help. Does that help? No, maybe not. Lower lip, upper lip. Yeah, there we go. I'm just looking for my neck hairs to stand up, and I know I kind of get the right setting. <laughs> Face shape. Forehead. Chin height. Oh, 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 yes, yes, chin height. Jawline. Oh yeah, there we go. Maybe. I don't know. I don't want to look too caricaturish. Face width. Mm, yeah, I like that one. Where do I want that one? Maybe close to normal actually. 
All right, so so that's decent. So let, but let's uh, let's do some customization here. So I'm just going to grab the um, this tool, and we need to go up. And it is really aggressive right now. So let's drop the density on this and the pressure. Just pull that eye bag down just a bit. And even her teeth. I kind of like the square part on her mouth. It's just kind of interesting. So we'll just keep it like that. Maybe we'll pull her lip down a little bit more to make it a little more obvious. Do I like that? I think I do, but maybe not that obvious. Something like that. Maybe. And noted that I am working from a distance here. I'm not getting up close to this thing. Uh, the other thing about this that I want to do is her hands. So her hands are interesting, but they're not interesting enough. So let's use the pucker tool. And uh, I'm just going to tap. Because the pucker tool, if you hold it down, I, and it's just going to get too too much, I think. So if I just tap a little bit on when I have her finger at the focus of the, the pucker tool, we can play with the scaling of what's under there um, a little bit make her, her fingers like really weirdly skinny just again we're, we're going for viewer discomfort here <laughs> so maximum viewer discomfort all right and then uh use this tool again and just kind of push these parts together more so her, make her hands really thin just weird weird shapes and maybe not even think her hands, you know, they may go, ooh, who's got her head? Mindful of your anatomy, like don't push, you know, your bony, the bony mark landmarks down. You want to leave those up. That makes it more believable. If you ramp that out, it doesn't look as good. So um, there's a bone here. You should know that. So everyone's got one. If you need to use your own hands for reference, go ahead. Um, Pull these back a bit. I'm running a bit of a backup here, so I'm getting a little bit of lag. Okay, hit OK. Before and after. That's pretty good. All right, so let's save that, and uh, we'll go back to Capture One. Okay, we're back inside Capture One. Uh, so I'm going to do the uh, end processing here. Uh, you can do the same thing in Lightroom if you'd like. There's nothing uh, in particular uh, once we've left the raw processor that you, I mean, they're a horse apiece. Um, although I much prefer Capture One for raw processing. Uh, at the end of the day, they're they're very similar. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and crop this now because um, we don't need this, this corner up here. And I kind of want to straighten it, I think, um, just to have it so her eyes are kind of across from each other. I don't also need all this black at the bottom, so I'm going to change my my uh, scale here to like an eight by 10 situation um, because the black dress is just a bunch of black. Uh, so I think I like that crop. That crop is nice. Okay, so let's look at colorizing, colorizing, colorization, colorization of this thing. Uh, do we like our exposure and do you want more contrast? Maybe, uh, again, I'm just playing. Uh, we can't really increase our exposure anymore uh, because it's gonna change you know, we want to do all those exposure type things before we go into into Capture One or into uh, Lightroom if possible, um, ideally. Well, it looks like I want this a little bit brighter than it was before, so. And we want any our shadow detail. Nope, maybe a bit. Highlight doesn't do anything once we've, I mean, it does stuff, but it does icky stuff. So once we've left raw, try and avoid this, this slider, in my opinion. Um, Let's go into color. So in here, uh, this is where we're going to do a little bit of work. Uh, first of all, I'm going to create a brush and uh, brush in her hair. So I'm going to hit M for mask. I just want to see what I'm masking here. I just want to roughly mask her hair in like that. Real rough. Again, we're dealing with body paint and something that isn't realistic skin, so we can be a lot more um, brutal with our masks. And I want to look at contrast for this layer. There we go. And then uh, maybe a little less saturation. Kind of play her natural hair color down a bit. 
Um, I do want it there, but um, I don't want it as strong. So again, personal preference, do whatever you want to do. Uh, then I'm looking at the red. Like the red is, is it a bit much? Um, maybe, maybe. Okay, so let's go in and uh, modify this this red. So I'm going to go to Color Editor Advanced, click in the eyedropper, click on our lip, and then we can see uh, what we're picking if we use this color range. So that's picking the right color range. And from here, I can adjust the hue. And no, we don't want wild swings like we can in Lightroom. You can't like do huge changes. Like we can't make this blue um, like we could in Lightroom. Only slight shifts. Uh, but we can do, um, we can drop the saturation a bit. Um, make it a little bit more in line, I think, with what might be realistic. <laughs> realistic. And uh, I think I like that color there. Yeah, let's go with that. And then uh, see your, your darkness. So we could add a little, we could pull that down just a bit. Again, it's personal preference. It's what you like. I think I do like the original color, close to the original color. All right, that looks pretty decent to me. All right, and then um, I do want to do uh, one more layer brush. I want to grab her dress here. So let's just mask that in super fast. So I'm going to do this. Kind of rough it in. And then we can go, we can grab this menu here and say fill mask and it'll fill in all your gaps. And for mask, go to clarity and then uh, pump up the clarity on this. Just maybe punch it uh, so we can see more of the detail in this outfit. Uh, I don't want to steal the show, but I do want a little bit more than it had originally. There we go. That's nice. And then add another layer and brush. And I think I want this to kind of cover a bit of her eye. So we're just going to roughly touch her eye. So this is what we have. We just have a mask like this. And I'm going to go into clarity again. And I'll probably go to classic and just give it a bit of a, a yank this way. I don't know. We could try another, some of the other. You can alt click on this to see before and after. Whoa, that's scary, isn't it? <laughs> So before and after, it's very subtle. Uh, let's yank it up so we can see what we're doing. So that's before and after. Um, what about classic? That's a bit much. How about neutral? Yeah, I kind of like this one. So if we back this effect off, maybe structure a bit. Yeah, that's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's creepy. All right, creep myself out here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Is there any other thing we need to do here? Well, yeah, let's do, um, let's go back and do a color balance. So uh, I went and I select my background layer first. Uh, you can also create a separate layer and fill it. Um, you can also hold this down and add a new fill layer. I just did it in two steps, because why not? And then my shadows, so my shadow tone. Again, I just kind of grab it and move it around until I kind of, like the direction it is and then i so i like it this way but i don't know exactly how strong i want it and that's what this effect is is how strong okay and then i know just based on color theory that my other the other side of my wheel here is going to want some attention so it might be it's the midtone nope <laughs> maybe it's the master yeah so the master um that's adding a little bit of um, just a little warmth to it. Do I want that though? Like, do I like it this way? Do I want my master to be pulled down too? No. Hmm. What about the highlight? I rarely play with the highlight one. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. So I think I might just stay with uh, the shadow being the only uh, colorization we add to this. Let's just check around. The warm isn't bad, but I really like the cold. Yeah, I think like that. That looks pretty decent to me. Yeah, it's creepy. Okay, well, so that's where I'm going to keep it. Um, we're going to go ahead and export it to a few different places. So these are all recipes. Uh, add my copyright to it. Uh, grab my watermark, and then I can move that around. I call it a brand, not a watermark so much, because I don't want it to destroy the image, but I want you to know who made it. So uh, good enough for me. And unlike Lightroom, which has got to be the most, I don't know, 
irritating method of placing a watermark. You have to have each different location and a different opacity and a different everything. This is just, you just pick it up and move it. And I've got a couple, I have a black one and a white one. That's really all I need. So I'll put that there. I can't make it any smaller. I do have a smaller version of this one, um, but I think this is appropriate for this image. Is that where I want it? Mm. Yeah, I think I like it over there. All right, so we'll leave it there. And then, uh, so this will export it to all the places I want it to go. So I just hit export and we're done. So there you go. That's how you uh, take a friend and make them an enemy. <laughs> so uh, have fun. Take some pictures of yourself and, and throw them online. And then your your wife will do like she does for me and say, hey, uh, if you post that on, um, on Facebook, I'm going to block you. So you won't see these on Facebook uh, because, uh, yeah, she doesn't, uh, she doesn't like this time of year. Uh, but it's my favorite time of year, so I go ahead and uh, put these up as I can. So uh, if you like the video, please take a moment and click the like button. I really appreciate that. And uh, ask me any questions you have in the uh, comments below, and I'm happy to help you out. And I might do one more of these. I have uh, one more that's a little grosser, uh, not grotesque-wise, but just disturbing. It's a, a little more disturbing. Uh, so uh, I might decide to put one up soon as well. But you see, this went pretty fast. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, as long as you have some thought going into it, I knew what I wanted to do when I had her do these poses. So uh, my idea was to kind of manipulate parts of the body and create something like this. And obviously uh, we win. So I will catch you next time.